I thought it might be quite nice to do a video on the Micron F75 milling machine. I don't think there's anything on YouTube at the moment that, uh, that uh, demonstrates this machine. And I really think it's one of the most underrated small milling machines that uh, was produced in the, well it was produced from the 1920s right the way through into the 1960s. Um, these machines are um, they're relatively compact but on a rather heavy cast iron stand as you can see here and uh, they have uh, interchangeable um, vertical and horizontal heads. Um, they're, I think they're more frequently seen with a horizontal head in fact but uh, uh, the vertical head is probably the most useful. Uh, aspect of the machine. They've got a, a little table here which is about uh, 5 inches by 14 inches long um, and the travels I believe, I think the travel on the on the long slide here is about 5 inches and about 3 inches back, back and forth or maybe a little more. Um, they take a, a W20 type collet uh, in, the, in the head here uh, but the collet is, is Micron's own uh, collet. They also used in the T90 lathe. Um, it's, um, it's, it's broadly similar to a W20 and in fact a W20 will fit with the uh, appropriate draw bar with the right thread on it. Um, so the machine that you see here has, uh, has, has got the additional uh, uh, power feed unit on it. And I'll do a, a, a close-up shot of that in a moment, just to show, uh, just to show that. Um, it's also uh, currently fitted with the uh, with the indexing head and tail stock. Um, these units are rather nice. They have a, a the, the the table has a, um, a, a beveled edge to the T slots, and they have a, um, a corresponding bevel that fits to the to the T-slot here. I'll show the details uh, further later. Um, this machine I've had, um, well I think it was the first milling machine I ever bought and um, I sold it with a Micron uh, lathe uh, and really regretted selling it and then a, a number of years later, I think probably about um, uh, going on for, for, for nearly 10 years later the uh, the owner the new owner rang me up and said that uh, they they never got around to using the machine and would I like to buy it back and I jumped at the opportunity to buy it back because of, because it's such a, a, a super little machine um, it's in a slightly compromised position over in the corner of the workshop here um, with rather too much stuff um, in this workshop as it stands my machine is, is set up to, uh, it hasn't got the original two-speed motor in it, uh, which, uh, which I, I, when I originally had it, I changed it for a single phase motor, which is always a bad idea in my opinion. Uh, so um, when I got it back, I, I fitted the, a, um, a, uh, a dual voltage motor so that it can be run from uh, 240 volts, uh, single phase from an inverter as you see so um so the machine set up and um I'll, I'll switch it on so it can be running they're, they are a little noisy these machines but, uh, so i'm not quite sure what speed that's running on i would say it's probably about a thousand rpm and uh I've got it set up so it'll run down pretty, pretty slow speed. This machine, as I said, also has the, uh, the power feed mechanism on it, which is uh, a very useful thing. Um, and I've augmented the power feed uh, by having it, instead of originally it was driven from the, uh, the vertical head or the horizontal head. Um, and I decided that it would be a much better idea to drive it independently from a, uh, in this case, 
just a DC motor. And, um, and so the power feed, feed unit here um, is, um, uh, uh, it only operates when the spindle is operating, the power feed unit will operate as well. Um, it's got an automatic knockout on it. Uh, very the speed and also change direction. Unfortunately the automatic knockout doesn't work going in the opposite direction but in speeds going from, uh, from right to left the automatic knockout operates. Nice running this, it's highest, it's fastest rate of feed down. Of course, you know, I can put the feed right down. Put the feed right down. Right down. Um, so that's rather a, a neat addition to the uh, to to the machine. These things are beautifully made. They're um, they were never painted. They were finished in this this rather nice uh, micron sort of metal sprayed finish for these later machines. The early mach earlier machines were just a bare cast iron. I think this is some kind of of nickel iron uh, finish that's being applied. One of the things that's always quite astonishing to look at is the uh, is the fit of this cover over the top of the uh, bevel drive here. Uh, uh, it's um, it's really quite an astonishing uh, uh, piece of work. I'll, um, I'll take the cover off and and, and show you that in a, in a detail. So we've got this rather beautiful cover, which is just held on with a couple of a couple of screws, and. Uh, it really is an absolutely superb fit. Um, so good, I expect it's going to be a bit difficult to remove. Oh, there we are. This is absolutely packed full of grease in here in order to try and keep the uh, bevel gears quiet. Uh, not a really a very successful way of doing it. But the cover is, is just... You know, it's a superb thing milled out of the of the uh, of the casting and this beautiful sort of bottle shaped head and it's a wonderful precision fit with I mean you can just see a witness mark round to show where it is but it's so superbly done uh, this is one of the features of the machine that's always quite astonishing. Okay so this is the uh, just a, a general layout of the machine if I come a bit further back you can see the cast iron base somewhat better and there's the horizontal head down there on the floor um, so over on the left hand side of the machine here we've got the uh, handle for the vertical elevation of the of the table and you can see the horizontal head the vertical head the vertical head is um, is is on a uh, uh, prismatic bedway which is the same profile as the T90 uh, lathe bed so you could put a, a T90 lathe headstock the lathe headstocks differ in that they've got uh, four pulleys rather than the three pulleys that these um, these uh, uh, milling machine headstocks have. Um, coming around to this side, you can see the power feed uh, mechanism. I'm just a little bit, uh, a little bit cramped over here. 
but uh, this is the power feed mechanism. So there's a carden shaft here driving into this uh, superb little gearbox arrangement here. It's got a worm and wheel in it. And, um, and then there's these rather nice interlocking devices here, uh, which um, lock the power feed in. Oh, the power feed's actually loose on there. I need to do this, tighten up the screws. Um, power, power feed there, and obviously that just unlocks it when it comes up to the end. Notice at the end of the shaft here, um, sticking out, which is the shaft that connects directly to the to the feed screw. Um, that has got a keyway on it, and that's for putting on uh, gears and a banjo, so that uh, you can use it with spiral milling. And I have a, a spiral milling head, which fits on here. Don't suppose I'll ever use it. Um, I haven't used it so far, anyway. So, and then there's this arm that comes out of the side here. The pulley arrangement here is a is a uh, is something that I've made up, but. Uh, because uh, as I say, it's it's driven from this uh, DC electric motor down here. Um, so it's got various uh, stops on the side here for the uh, virtual travel. I've actually got a, a complete three three axis DRO system to go on here. Um, I just haven't got around to fitting it. Uh, the machines just uh, gets used too frequently. I've got too many other projects on the go. One of the interesting features of, of this machine is while the long screw is just a conventional uh, uh, Acme type uh, thread, the um, both the vertical and the cross feed are so. There's the Acme thread for the. Uh, we can see see that. That's the Acme thread for the uh, for the x-axis. Um, if we look down under the, maybe we can actually get in to see that. It's not doing a bad job of focusing on it by the looks of it. Um, that large threaded drum there is the y-axis, which acts on a a fully throated uh, rack, uh, for want of a better word. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's like a half nut of a lathe, I suppose. Um, I think that drum is around 40 millimetres in diameter. It might be bigger. Um, but um, an unusual but uh, uh, effective way of doing it. This, this machine the slides are in very, very good condition on it, but unfortunately had been abused by a previous owner, I would think in private hands, who managed to mill the table in a completely uh, thoughtless way. Um, they'd also managed to break the tea slot on the on the table there, pulling it out on, the, on one of its thin sections by using tea nuts that weren't well. I would think actually they were using ordinary nuts uh, because all the tea slots are broken out under here. You can see that there's uh, it's breaking out. It's a, it's a real shame, and it's always irritated me. But um, uh, all of the other I've had a few of these machines through my hands. And none of the others have been as nice as this in terms of the action of the slides. So to remove the vertical head from this machine and replace it with the with the horizontal or vice versa, it's a question of uh, removing the belt. The belt has got no tensioning device in it. The belt just simply has to be the right length. So it's a question of just rolling the belt off the pulleys. Being careful not to take your fingers. Out while you're doing it, and um, and then just heaving the head off. Now the head is very heavy, and um, it. If you're thinking about buying one of these machines, and you're going to 
going to need to change from horizontal uh, from vertical to horizontal fairly regularly you need to think about how you're going to do this because um, this head I would guess weighs something in the region of 30 or 40 kilos so it's 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 pretty heavy um, best thing is to get the table up so it's almost at the top here and then to slip it off like so and then have something convenient nearby to stand it on. Um, it is a bit of a beast and uh, replacement is, is obviously just the opposite of that. Again it's not particularly easy to do, it's just a question of leaving it on, getting it lined up with the bed, sliding it back on. I tend to leave it towards the front so it gives me the maximum capacity and then tighten up the eccentrics. Put the belt back on. That's the job done but as I say it's heavy and um, it's not a job. I think when I was 20 years younger um, I didn't really think very much of it. Um, 20 years on, it feels quite heavy.